do have some very old boxed Atari games. Space Invaders is probably the oldest game that I have. Let's have a look at this. This is the classic release of Space Invaders for the Atari VCS. The original game is from 1978. I don't know if this game is from 1978. It says they're 1980. Either way, it's a very old game. And uh, a very surprising thing about this game is that there's 112 different variations that you can choose from. Yeah, you get a bit of a rundown of all of the different versions. Moving shields... Uh, Invisible Invaders, uh, up to 112, and also a two-player mode. Alright, I've got my Atari set up, so let's play some Space Invaders. I should say though, I'm playing this on my Atari 7800. It is backwards compatible, so there's no problem with me playing older games on it. So this is what you're met with when you first turn the machine on, with the cartridge plugged in. Nice bit of colour cycling there. You can actually see a bit of an artefact on the left of the screen there, which is a, a slight bug from uh, the programming trick to get so many objects on screen at once. All right, let's go. Now it must be said that this is a conversion of an arcade game. The original Space Invaders wasn't an Atari game. It was actually made by it was actually made by Taito in Japan and Atari just licensed it for their console. Of course Atari made lots of arcade games themselves. This really was a killer app for the machine and probably for video games itself. You can see they do get faster as you kill them off. Okay, wave two. This is quite different from the arcade original game actually. It seems to me at the time Atari weren't really all that concerned with making the conversions of games as accurate as possible. For quite a big chunk of the console's life it really wasn't capable of being all that accurate. But I think they could have done a more accurate version of Space Invaders. Perhaps they just weren't perhaps they just weren't thinking to. Their version of Pac-Man is another one that could have been more accurate.
you can see it does get progressively harder. They do start lower down on the screen with each wave. But this version of the game does remain really easy. And that's where the difficulty modifiers come in. Because on Atari consoles, or at least the, the older Atari consoles, you've got all sorts of switches for changing different things. There's a switch, um, you can actually make your little tank down the bottom, your player object, you can make it twice as chunky. But there's also 112 variations on the gameplay, which is really quite remarkable. This game's probably about four kilobytes or something like that. That's what happens when you let the invaders invade. All right, so here's lots of the different variations. You can see the number at the top there. It changes all sorts of different things. The speed of the bullets, whether the bases move. I think it changes whether the invaders are invisible, whether the bullets are invisible. And there's the uh, difficulty switch as well. So I've got fast bullets on and I've flipped the difficulty switch. So I've got a chunky invader, uh, a chunky tank rather. So yeah, now this is much more challenging. Oh, oh, got pinned in the corner there. Oh my god. Yeah, for some reason, when you get a game over, you still have like an extra life where you can't do anything. It's a bit weird that. So this one's got wibbly enemy bullets. Another difference between this and the original arcade game is that this has a sort of a march sound effect as the invaders move across the screen. But in the arcade original, there's like a, a four note bass line as they move. That might have been the first example of in-game music. They probably could have recreated that on the Atari VCS, but for some reason they chose not to. So I actually discovered a cheat because I thought, you know, it'd be weird if there was actually a cheat for this game. And it turns out there is. I think it's more of a programming error than an actual cheat. So normally in the game, you're only able to fire one bullet at a time. And you can't fire a second one until the first one has gone off the top of the screen. But with this cheat on, you can actually fire two bullets and you can have two on screen at the same time. That does make the game a lot easier. Yeah, to get double firepower, when you first turn the game on, press the game select button several times, but then hold down game reset and switch the console off and on whilst still holding game reset, and then let go of game reset once it's turned back on, and you should have double the firepower. This game is quite easy anyway. You can quite easily just go on forever. I suppose eventually your score will end up becoming higher than the game can display. 
I don't know what happens in that scenario. So yeah, Space Invaders, a uh, very, very old, very simple game, um, but it's an absolute classic and it's still very good. This is a game that I used to have, actually, even though it's a bit before my time. Uh, we only had our Amstrad CPC computer, but one day my grandparents gave us their old Atari console. And it was the old, uh, the one with that fake wood grain panel on the front and the the metal switches. I remember actually the machines smelt like tobacco. They must have been heavy smokers back then. I don't remember seeing my grandparents smoke or my dad or any of my aunts and uncles. I don't remember seeing them smoke, but the machine and the box and everything really stunk like smoke. But they gave us this console and uh, it had four games with it. Uh, it had this, it had Asteroids, it had Combat, and it had Battlezone. But there was instruction manuals for loads of other games in there. And uh, it was a bit disappointing that they, they never went back into their loft to try to look for these other games. To be fair, they might have sold them at some point. But there was instruction manuals for Berserk, Pac-Man, uh, some Star Wars game, Phoenix as well. I've bought most of those games now out of curiosity. I do remember once looking in a shop and seeing that they were still selling Atari games and uh, I wanted to buy Pole Position but um, it was like £25 and we were used to picking up Amstrad games at much much cheaper than that so my dad was a bit reluctant to. And uh, in the end we, we ended up dumping it for some reason and we ended up getting rid of it. So there you go, there's Space Invaders, an absolute stone-cold classic. Thank you for watching once again, and uh, goodbye.